Put that damn man first. Now. <laughs> the kids, the kids is you gonna better be put good. that baby down, pick that man up. Exactly. Okay. The, kids is, the kids is gonna be good. Take care of that man because that man <laughs> is taking care of the man is the roof, he the foundation. Ooh. He taking care of everybody gonna be taken care of. 100 percent And the funny 100. thing is, if they actually mm-hmm. put the man first, if there's a scenario where the kids need to be put first. He'll 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 take a seat back and say, "No, get them ready, get yeah. them going." Mm-hmm. It's not a problem, but y'all doing things out of order earlier mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Come on now. I think a lot of women see serving a man at equates to them being powerless, rather than understanding mm-hmm. that femininity Less and servitude is mm-hmm. a gentle power, mm-hmm. is a mm-hmm. nurturing power, is a fulfilling power, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just like just as we say. Um, Oh, I, this plate or this food, this dish is made with love, and and they say when it, when your food is made with love, it tastes better. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Please put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Please put a one in the chat. If you can hear me, it's so good to see everybody. Good evening, good evening. And as you come in, please don't forget to hit the like button. My name is Jillian. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Canada. Uh, The highest level of education completed was high school. I decided not to go to college. And I said I'm single, right? And then, uh, and then what do you do for work? I'm a writer. Okay. It's not for Vice, though, right? No, no. Okay. I saw that in the comments. Yeah, fuck no. Vice. Okay. Uh, what about you? Hi, my name is Hollywood. I'm a hey, setter. Y'all. Okay, good evening. I think I was on mute. So, good evening, everyone. Hit the like button. Good evening. It is so good to see everybody. Hello, Courtney. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for stopping through. Hello, Mona, Mona. Thank you so much for joining. It's so great to see everyone. It's so great to be back. I missed everybody, but we have something to talk about. I don't think I'm going to be before you all too long, but we've got a little something to talk about. Okay, the sound was on. Okay, good, good, good. (laughs) Good to see everyone. 
Thank you, Mona. Thank you. So, again, we have something to chat about. Did my baby wake up? Okay. Hi, babe. My husband just stopped in just to just to stop in, just to pop in. Okay. So, again, we have something to talk about. And I, I've been seeing sprinkle, sprinkle, drizzle, drizzle, all of that stuff. But I wanted to come to you all from a different angle and to just, of course, get the ladies to start thinking about the future in terms of how, uh, you know, you're going to treat your man, your future husband, and uh, the work, the type of work that you're going to need to put in, in order to essentially prove and show that not only your wife material, but that you want to be his wife. And so you're essentially going to have to pay tribute. And so I have a few things for, to show you, to talk about, and we are just going to get right into it. So as the title suggests, ladies, you have to cater to your man. So, you know, I didn't listen to Destiny's Child coming up, nor by the time I was able to basically pick the type of music that I wanted to listen to for myself. I didn't listen to them, but of course I know this song exists, okay? So I want to bring up the lyrics for Cater To You by Destiny's Child, just to again, get your mind going ladies in terms of the, I guess so much to say, the servitude posture or mode uh, that I think is good to have when it comes to you having a man who you look up to, who you desire, and who you respect. Because any woman who has a man worth having, she is going to show him how and what she loves about him through how she treats him and through the things that she does for him. So as these lyrics display, Cater to you, baby. Baby, I see you working hard. I want to let you know I'm proud. Let you know that I admire what you do. The more, if I need to assure you, sorry, y'all, I don't know like the tone or the, the tempo of the song, so just excuse me. My life would be purposeless without you. Yeah. If I want it, yeah, got it. When I ask you, you provide it. You inspire me to be better. You challenge me for the better. Sit back and let me pour out my love letter. Let me help you. Take your shoes off. Untie your shoe strings. Take off your cuff links. Yeah. What you want to eat, boo? Yeah. Let me feed you. Let me rub your run your bath water. Whatever you desire, I'll supply you. Sing you a song. Turn my game on. I'll brush your hair. Help you put your do-rag on. Want a feet rub? Yeah. Want a pedicure? Excuse me, want a manicure? Baby, I'm yours. I want to cater to you, boy. Let me cater to you because, baby, this is your day. Do anything for my man. Baby, you blow me away. I got your slippers, your dinner, your dessert, and so much more. Anything you want. Let me cater to you. Inspire me from the heart. Can't nothing tear us apart. All I want in a man. I put my life in your hands. I got your slippers. I got your dinner, your desire, and so much more. Anything you want, I want to cater to you. This is a woman who loves her man. This is a woman who cherishes her man, who desires her man, who holds her heart and his heart in her hands, and he has her heart. And she displays how much she admires him, cherishes him, respects him, nurtures him, and care for his peace. These lyrics display that. Ladies, if you're not willing to cater to your man, and if you're expecting for him to only cater to you, do you really love him? Hmm? Or, or are you just seeking a sugar daddy? Are you just seeking a trick? Or are you seeking a man who actually cherish you, cherishes you in return? A man who cares for your well-being? A man who's willing to put his life on the line for you and provide for you? And to give you his seed in order to yield a family? 
from. Ladies, you have to understand that if you're simply seeking a man to provide you material things, you're not looking for a husband. You're not looking you're not looking for a man who's actually worth your time, who's actually worth your effort. If you think you want a man who only caters to you, again, you're looking for a sugar daddy. You're looking for a trick. But a, but those types of things TikTok, TikTok have a time limit. And you being in that role only garnishes you a certain level of respect. And it certainly won't be on the level of, of respect that a wife garners. So ladies, if you truly value yourself and what you bring to the table and who you are, in your femininity, then you are going to value yourself higher than a sugar baby. Please do not allow these sprinkle, sprinkle content creators cause you to think that if a man is not tricking you off and if a man is not only and solely catering to you, that he isn't worth your time. Ladies, relationships are reciprocal. Fine, if you want a man to only cater to you and to pay your bills, yada, yada, why not just start walking the strip? Hmm? Why not just go ahead and make an OnlyFans? Why not go ahead and put an ad out on Craigslist for your little pretty kitty? Since you value yourself so low. Ladies, do not devalue yourself in that way. If you truly desire a family, come on up, rise on up. Because there are too many content creators who are literally to include Shira Seven. Okay. Who are simply just creating many prostitutes, many prostitutes, if you will while she in particular is sitting in her house that her black husband pays for. Ladies, be real, let's be real. Let's be honest and let's rise above the prosty culture that so many of you have already invested yourselves into. To include the content that encourages you and tells you that men ain't sugar, honey, iced tea. You need to decenter men. You need to not take men seriously and all black men are dusty and yada yada. That type of content that you've been eating is only what is causing you to create unhealthy relationship after unhealthy relationship which in return is degrading your self-esteem. No matter how much makeup you put up, put on, no matter how stiff or how blonde or how red that your wig may be, no matter how long your nails are going to be, you're going to wake up and realize that you've lost yourself because you've buried yourself under content that is created out of self-hate. Self-hate for your set for themselves, self-hate for the community, self-hate for actual family. Stop eating poison, ladies. Let me get into these comments really quickly. Because I know I was I was going in. <laughs> Shout out to my good sis Danica. Hold on, let me give you what I owe you, sis. Thank you for stopping through. I appreciate you, ma'am. And Danica says, stopping through briefly to show love, loving the hair. Thank you, girl. You know, I had to do the switch up. It took me a minute, but I did a switch up. I was ready. Thank you, sis, for stopping by. I appreciate you for being here. Shout out to you. Okay, let me see. 
Hey, Dre from Harrison Family Values. Thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for being a channel member. And shout out to you, Mona, as well, because you are a channel member. So thank you as well. Let me see. Yes, I want to cater to you. Parnell says, best song. Yes. Hey, D-Law, thank you so much for stopping by. Exactly. They be looking for a sugar daddy or a simp, simp, simpy, simp. As the good sis uh, Danica says, a simp lolly poppy. Okay. That's what they're looking for. And we do not want simps. Feminine women do not want weak, effeminate, simp husbands. Simps don't make good fathers. Simps don't make good protectors. Like, simps don't get the juices for me. Let's be real. So let's not do that to ourselves, ladies. Let's not start with, let's not start with the mentality of, you know, again, if he's not doing this, if he's not doing that, then he isn't enough. Or if he isn't allowing you to get away with certain type of behavior in the sense of using him, then he's not worth it or his uh, masculinity is toxic. That is a lie from the pit of hell, okay? Like seriously, please stop it. We're breaking chains over here. We're breaking the chains of feminism, of any four, B4, four, A4, four, D, whatever movement. We're breaking the chains of hating the family, of hating the nuclear family. Because if you hate the nuclear family, that means you are a, a small part in writing the end of family, thus increased population here on earth. Don't be silly. Thanks for stopping by. Send my likes up through the roof, roof, roof. Hey, send my likes up through the roof, roof, roof. Send my likes up through the roof. Please hit the like button. Listen, Lord have mercy. That's a mess. That's a mess. Yes, she's married to a black man. Let me tell you all something. Let me let you in on a little secret. Let me tell you something, Blaze. Let me tell you something. I actually used to follow Shira Seppi years ago, like when I was in college, okay? I was in college starting in 2014. I graduated in 2018, fresh out of high school. And she and she did pop up on my algorithm. And this was obviously prior to me like truly really getting into YouTube because I was kind of like in the natural hair space in the sense of um, watching some of the videos. Like I followed... Face over matter when she was doing her hair content and like some other content creators who were doing natural hair content. But other than that, I wasn't on YouTube. That was like pretty much literally like all the stuff I watched and like a little conspiracy stuff here and there. But <laughs> but that's pretty much it. But Shira Seven did end up on my um, algorithm, so I followed her, and I really didn't too much get into her content to be honest. It just never really resonated with me. And so I couldn't even tell you some of the content that she basically created. Uh, but it wasn't until like years later and I had like kept my subscription for her or whatever, I eventually kind of started watching her content and I was just kind of like, okay, this is this is interesting, but still mm, really isn't for me. And then as I got into more so the relationship and femininity space, that's when I actually checked her out and that's where I could kind of understand what was going on and i remember one video that i was watching from her where she was talking about like this is how you get money out of a man like let me tell you all this is literally what she was saying pretend like you have a dog and make sure you're playing dog when you're on the phone with him make sure you play, go on youtube and play like dog sounds in the background. So he thinks you have a dog and try to get a plane ticket out of him in order, you know, try to get him to fly you out and make sure you mention how 
you how he needs to pay for a ticket for your dog and make sure you're playing your the dog sounds in the background so he'll pay for the ticket or so he'll like send you money for the ticket or something like that i just remember that and i was just like why would you lie about a dog and he's gonna realize when you show up without a dog that you don't have a dog like what sense does this make? <laughs> like, I'm just like, what is this witchcraft? And that's what it is, ladies. Manipulation is a form of witchcraft, so stop participating in it. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm trying to, trying to tell you. Stop, stop it, stop it. But yeah, I was just like, that doesn't make sense. Men are not that dumb. Like, come on. Like, they're only going to go for that for so long. And then I remember one time I was in her chat and I asked her, I just typed in a question just to see if she would answer. And she happened to see my question. Okay, see, Mona, you know what I'm talking about. I asked her, what was her opinion on feminism? And she happened to see my question. And she said, I, my opinion on feminism is, Feminism is the highest form of femininity and women's empowerment. And by that time, I had already started consuming um, some of like Cam Kevin Samuel's content. And so I was a little bit more understanding of kind of like the relationship space and what she was talking about. And so when she said that, I was just kind of like, I don't know, you know, so. You know, I used to follow her and I didn't really see her content as harmful because I really didn't consume enough of it. But now that I am older and wiser, I certainly see how damaging that her content can be because it's based in manipulation, which is a form of witchcraft. And ladies over here, I absolutely positively do not encourage you to participate in any form of manipulation because it manipulation is is based in selfishness it's based in pride and ego and i just it's just not it just isn't a good thing to participate in and um you know to allow to control you because who wants to who wants to be manipulated if you don't want to be ma manipulated why would you manipulate others and so i just cut it out just cut it out but anyway Let's keep on going here. So yeah, I, I showed the, the lyrics of Cater to You. And again, as we know, ladies, if you're not gonna cater to that man, do you actually care for that man? Like, come on, we talk about nurturing your man. We talk about, you know, giving him words of affirmation, caring for him, and just being there for him as a helpmate, as a form of support. And so in that way, you can cater to him by, as the song said, you know, taking his shoes off, giving him a, a massage, making sure he eats, singing to him, and yada, yada. Let that song teach you something, ladies. Oh, Lord. The, don't be dumb like this. That's not a turn on at all. Please come, come on, rise on up out of your simpish ways, man. Come on, stop it. Stop being so darn gullible. It doesn't matter how cute she is. Okay, so let's keep on moving here. So I showed a clip of a panel that myself and even Mona and even Mona was on. Mona, could you please put the link in the chat for me? I forgot to put it, um, the link to the panel um, in the description box. So please, could you drop that link to that um, to the video from Lady Dye's channel? But I briefly showed you guys or pulled up a clip from a panel that Mona and I were on, and we were basically talking about. Um, you know, if the modern woman is ready to uh, be a wife, is ready to be married. But prior to that clip, there is a actual a post a, that I saw on Instagram that I wanted to show you all prior to because this is, of course, surrounded around the whole cater you know, to him conversation. But so here it is, and let me see, this is still up here. And to stage, okay. 
Here we go. Let me back up. <laughs> Hi, Betshua. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Christopher. Good to see you. Don't be a simp. Don't be a simp. Again, simps don't make the juices flow. Feminine women, women who want to be wives and mothers don't want to marry simps. Women don't take simps seriously. Stop catering to women. If, if she clearly shows that her energy and her liking you is not reciprocal, stop it. No, you're not going to grow on her. No, you're not going to grow on her. Stop being a simp. Please. <laughs> okay. So I hope you guys can, can read that. Can you read that? Let me see. Okay. Yes. So the post says, I want to marry a man that, that loves to cater to me. So she's basically saying she wants to marry a simp. Like his sole purpose in life is to make my life easier. That's what I deserve. Now I'll say. So my husband and I, we just celebrated five years together yesterday. And so my husband treated me to a day at the spa. That was his form of catering to me. And oh my God, you guys, it was amazing. It was, oh my God, uh, amazing. And so that was my husband's form of catering to me. But it isn't like it's an everyday thing. Like he's, you know, hand and foot at my ever, you know, beckoning call. Babe, do this. Babe, do that. Bend down so you can be my footstool. Throw down your jacket on the ground so I don't walk through that puddle. No. There's a difference between a man loving you and caring for you and giving you things that you want and even need. And then there's another line in, again, just being a sin, being goofy. Gentlemen, please find that in between. Because, again, being a simp is not going to make the juices flow. You're just going to get used up and pushed aside when she's done. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Mona posted the link to the clip that I'm about to play. Let me see if I can pin it. Uh-uh. Hold on, guys. Okay, here's, here's the link pinned. Okay, so again... She says that she wants to marry a man that loves to cater to her. Like his sole purpose in life is to make her life easier. That's what I deserve. Ladies, mm-mm, mm-mm, absolutely not. If you are that man's world, like the center of his universe, that means he has no purpose. He has no ambition. He has no life. There's nothing sexy about that. You want a man who's even keeled. So that means if you're at the center of his universe, that means his emotions ebb and flow along with yours. Turn off. No, I need my man to be able to straighten me out and to neutralize my attitude when it's doing this. When our emotions are doing this, you want a man whose emotions are generally like this, right? Yes, men still have emotions and things of that nature. But you want a man who can, again, neutralize all of everything that you're going on, that you have going on. If you are the center of his universe, that means he's flowing as you flow. But then you're going to be trying to figure out how come he's not a leader or how come, you know, he's, he's so emotional. It's because you're his purpose. 
You want a man with a plan, ladies. You want a man with goals and ambition that he's going to execute with or without you. That's a man worth following. That's a producer. That's a man who's going to be successful. Isn't it sexy when a man has goals and plans, career goals that he pursues outside of what you all have going on in your relationship? Why in the world would you want you to, like, why would you want that? I just don't understand. So, yeah, anyway, this post says, someone replied to her and said, what about him? And she said, question mark, question mark, question mark. How immature. She wants a sugar baby. She doesn't want a man. So to that, this is what I said. You put your kids in it. I'm like, girl, I'm like, girl, you need to put that damn man first. Now. The kids, the kids is you better be put good. that baby down, pick that man up. Exactly. Okay. The, kids is, the kids is gonna be good. Take care of that man because that man is taking care of the man is the roof, he the foundation. Ooh. He taking care of everybody gonna be taken care of. 100 percent But and the funny thing is, if they actually mm -hmm. put the man first. If there's a scenario where the kids need to be put first, he'll 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 take a seat back and say, "No, get them ready, get yep. them going." Mm -hmm. It's not a problem, but y'all doing things out of order earlier mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I think a lot of women see serving a man at equates to them being powerless, rather than understanding mm -hmm. that femininity oh, and servitude is mm -hmm. a gentle power, mm -hmm. is a mm -hmm. nurturing power, is a fulfilling power mm. and mm. just like just as we say um oh I, this plate or this food this dish is made with love and and mm -hmm. they say when it, when your food is made with love it tastes better mm. <laughs> the environment you bring in your servitude makes the atmosphere sweeter just mm. as mm. more the you know the christian folk you want to be a sweet aroma in the nostrils, mm -hmm. in the nostrils mm -hmm. of God, mm -hmm. how can how can you be that sweet aroma through you being a, through you being willing to serve in your heart, and then it translating through your action? Mm -hmm. But you see, a lot of women they're not willing to serve in their heart first. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I dropped a lot of gems in this clip. We're going to keep going. But wanting to serve starts from within. Wanting to serve is not selfish, but it's selfless. If you find yourself consuming content that encourages you to be selfish within relationship, that is not an ingredient that's conducive to a healthy, lasting relationship. I urge you to pay attention to what you eat because what you are eating, the content that you are consuming will cause you to change the perspective and the lens that you view your world from. And so with every man, if you're, con if you're constantly consuming content that says men are only to be used for their money, for their resources only and you are to be emo and you are to be emotionally detached to the relationship, that is what you are going to see men as. And then you're going to wonder why you cannot keep a relationship or why you keep attracting men who only want to use you. 
no matter how much money he makes, no matter how handsome he may be. You're never going to be satisfied. Because of what the selfishness, because of what the pride, because of me, me, me. That's why I call them entitled princesses, because princesses expect to be catered to without having to put out or give herself. And in being a wife, and as uh, Mrs. She said, said in our in a wife's job description, it says woman servant. Women, woman servant, but it isn't. But again, it, it isn't mm -hmm. powerless. It's just a title. Just as he's my man servant, he paid the bill, or he's my bodyguard, he's my rock, mm -hmm. he's my this. You are to be that as well. And so, as I've said on on my channel, ladies, um, be just as he's your rock, be his net. But they're not willing to be his net. Mm -hmm. He's your rock in the sense of. You recharging on him as Auntie Take He said, as in him being able to bring your attitude way down because he he helps you know neutralize all mm -hmm. everything you got going on. But just as he's that mm -hmm. to you, be his net, be be there um, to and be willing to catch him when he falls, when he needs yeah. a shoulder to lay on. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Mrs. She said says something said a particular word that stuck out to me, which was vulnerability. Mm, Can he mm. be vulnerable with you without mm. you turning on him when you're upset in an argument? Because mm. there's a complaint mm -hmm. that men have to say, you know, when don't open up to a woman because she's going to spew out all of your business or she's going to therapize mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, oh, you probably acting like that because you ain't had no daddy or because or because. Mm -hmm. Ladies, can you be his emotional safety net can he trust you with pillow talk can he trust that you're not going to regurgitate the secret and things that you two have discussed in secret in your private time to the public whether it be on social media or in front of family and friends that is a part of nurturing him that is a part of catering to your man this is what wives do. Wives, wise women build their house. Wise women build their houses. If you're spewing and constantly gossiping about your husband's secrets, you're chipping away at the foundation of what is supposed to be a healthy relationship. A wise woman builds her house with confidence. Confidence as in being able to keep secrets, keep private se conversations private, and with being able to discern what is appropriate to say and what not to say. A wise woman builds her house with words of affirmation. A wise woman builds her house, her house, excuse me, with the nurturing of the belly and the soul. A wise woman builds her house by praying. But what does all of these things require, ladies? Selfishness. Excuse me, selflessness. Selflessness. Are you a wise woman or a cantankerous woman? Are you a wise woman or are you as low as a pig? Are you a wise woman or are you a Jezebel? You make the decision. Let's keep going. <laughs> rather, than being, rather than being a friend. Yeah. Th these women can't even be good friends to their men, let alone be a wife. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that's why, mm -hmm. again, it, it comes down to, again, the pride. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. The ego. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's it's satanic. It's demonic because mm-hmm. Lucifer said, I can be this. I can be that. What is mm-hmm. that pride? And all mm-hmm. these they said, well, I need to be served. I, I. But what about we? My will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you mm-hmm. one thing. So you took us to relationship church, baby. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> My bad. I love, no, that's some good stuff. I like that. Okay. Do we have a uh, preaching sermon for wives? You know? My bad. Yeah, I ain't been preaching on you. I just felt it. I felt no, it. Was that was good. <laughs> So that was that was a fun live stream or you know pre-record. But send my lights up through the roof, roof, roof. Hey, send my lights up through the roof, roof, roof. Send my lights up through the roof. Please hit the like button if you are here. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And shout out to you. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the five years and many more to come. Salute to y'all. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. God is good. There is a comment that I actually starred from b only fathers cater to a woman unconditionally and without requirement. Keyword requirement. Unfortunately, I'm not your father. So prove to me you deserve such provision and protection. Ladies, you have to show and prove that your wife material, that you want this man around, that you actually appreciate him. If you actually appreciate this man, you're going to show it. And that shows that hopefully you value this man for more than what he actually brings you. Like, yes, my husband is a provider. He provides provision and protection, all of those things. But I actually care for him for more than the tangible things. I actually care for him as a person, like as a human being, as a man, okay? Okay, so there's a few things I wanted to chat with you ladies about, and then we're going to keep going a little bit further into my second largest point in bringing this conversation to you. So one thing I want to say, ladies, is it is time to separate yourselves. And of course, I'm speaking to the women who are particularly looking to be a wife. It is time to separate yourselves from the women who are out to use men. From the women who are, you know, sugar babies, prosties, selfish manipulators. It is time to separate yourselves. So if you notice you have friends who are looking to use and abuse men for their resources, the bad company, can corrupt to good manner. Cut her off. You do not have time to be connected to anything dead because if you are alive and thriving and if you're connected to something that is dead, eventually it's going to delete you as well. Stop playing around with your future, ladies. We are living in a time where More toxicity and movement is running quicker and rampant throughout the world. We got new feminism movement after new feminism movement. Decentering men, 4B. along with all this type of dark femininity content that women in masses have been consuming. Separate yourselves. Stop listening to that content. Cut off those types of friends and even family members because you do not not have time to play. And men who are worth having are not going to play with you either. They're not about to play those types of games. 
Also, break out of your heightened sense of selfishness, entitlement, and pride. You have to fight the urge, ladies, to be selfish. You have to fight it within here. You have to reject it within here and with he within here. It's not going to happen overnight, and sometimes it's not going to be easy. But this is where being connected to the Most High is most important to help you purge those undesirable characteristics that you do, in fact, have. Be real with yourself. Be honest with yourself. How can you expect to self-improve if you're if you're not willing to be to let go of the negative attributes that are not conducive to a healthy, lasting relationship? Don't you want to be a better woman? Being a better woman does not equal being more selfish and more prideful and more combative. A masculine man desires a feminine woman. Being selfish and being prideful and being combative only hardens you. Thus, only making you a masculine a masculine woman, which is going to repel a masculine man and attract a feminine man and attract a simp and attract a man who only wants to sit on your couch, eat your baby snacks, play the uh, PlayStation and scratch his belly. And the dude can't keep it up. Sometimes it's you, girl. Sometimes it's you. I'm just saying. As mentioned, stop using men and appreciate them for their nature. And understand that in relationship, ladies, the both of you mutually benefit from each other. You use him. And he uses you. He provides things to you. You provide things to him. I use my husband and he uses me. But we're a team. Each player on the team, they're useful and important. But again, they're useful to each other. They benefit to one another. As they say, there was no I in team. If you want to want to be selfish and only think about yourself, then fine. But don't go seeking a relationship. Don't go wasting a man's time. Shoot, don't go wasting your time either. And stop blaming men for the poor choices that you have in the dating market. It's you, sis. It's you. As mentioned earlier, a masculine man is not going to let you run game on him. Please understand that. A masculine productive man who is worth having is not going to let you run game on him or any other person for that matter. I'm going to dig into that point a little bit, but let me just... Pull this video back up to remind you what this young lady said. Let the two men in on a little secret, ladies. Don't kill me for this, but women hate for a man to know his word. I said it, yeah. We don't like that shit. Nigga come around thinking he know his word. Oh, he too good for this. He too good for that. A man that know his worth ain't gonna let us play with him. And I don't like that. I, me personally, I don't like that. Nigga, I need you to come around not knowing shit. Let's I'm going to let you lean in on a little secret, ladies. Don't kill me for this, but women hate for a man to know his word. I said it, yeah. We don't like that shit. Nigga come around thinking he know his word. Oh, he too good for this. He too good for that. A man that know his worth ain't going to let us play with him. And I don't like that. I, me personally, I don't like that. Nigga, I need you to come around not knowing shit. Only a certain type of woman doesn't like when a man knows his worth. Why? Because he's going to set 
standards for his life. He's going to set expectation for the woman who he's going to be with. And some of you women realize that you cannot be held up to that standard because you don't fit the bill. Some of you ladies realize that you cannot rise to the occasion to truly be the type of woman that the type of man that you want or think you want, wants. So instead of rising to the occasion, you try to, to degrade the standards and expectation of a man of value. How silly is that? You want a man to lower his value to reach your subpar level? No, baby, rise up. Raise yourself up to the occasion. You want better options overall in the dating pool? Then actually do the work to increase your value. Don't be silly. But again, a masculine man is not going to let you run game on him. And he's not going to, going to allow anyone else to run game on you. And what do I mean by that? If someone tries to scam you or disrespect you, a truly masculine man is going to be able to see right through it. And he's going to be able to correct it in some capacity. Like if he sees a scammer trying to scam you, he'll be like, okay, steer clear because that's a scammer. And then, of course, it's your choice to listen or not. Or if someone tries to disrespect you in some form of, or fashion, and I'm not talking about in a dangerous way, but, you know, it could just be a, something simple like, I don't know, cutting you in the line, right? If he finds that it's necessary to stand up for you or to say something, then he will. A masculine man is not going to let the ones he loved get ran over, especially not his woman, but you have to, uh, you have to learn to appreciate what a masculine man comes with. As I say over here all the time, and we're creatures of habit. That's why I say the same things. So I can try to get it ingrained within your minds, ladies. You're not going to like everything that the masculine man says and the order and structure that he comes with, but it is what it is because we need it. You may not like it in the moment, but you will learn to appreciate it. That's why it's important for you to understand a man's nature now. So when you get and come across a masculine man, you'll be, be able to identify him. Okay. Moving on. Lead with your femininity. Your patience. Being willing to learn. Being open to learning being self-aware, being intuitive. And even, again, tapping into your spirituality. Ladies, especially for those of you who, who believe in Christ, I encourage you to take a look at the Proverbs 31 woman. I encourage you to take a look at Esther. And I also encourage you to, to take a look at the stories with Delilah and Jezebel in them. Pick out the characteristics and traits that each of these women have. The character traits. Make a list and compare them. And I encourage you to compare those lists to the type of content that you consume. OK, so this person's content matches up here with this person's content 
will go under that category. And that will tell you whether or not the type of content that you're consuming is leading you down the path of wifedom or loneliness. Yes, check out the story of Hannah as well. Yes, I agree. Wife them or destruction? Righteousness or hellfire? I'm serious, ladies. It's time to stop playing. Please like the video, share, and subscribe. Okay, lastly, to the other main point I wanted to share with you. Let me go ahead and bring this video up really quick. So there's a video that I watched, a live stream rather, that I saw by Mr. Jason Black over on the business channel that I thought would be a good fit for tonight's discussion. He talked about paying tribute to a producer. And so he juxtaposed this idea with the relationship between Angela Simmons and Yo Gotti. As you may be familiar with Angela Simmons, her father is like a hip hop mogul. And so she grew up, you know, quite privileged. And, you know, she eventually went her own way. She's a single mother. And then now, or well, I'm not too sure if they're still together, her and Yo Gotti, but she eventually got into a relationship with Yo Gotti with, who has children as well, I believe. Okay, all my eyes says they aren't together anymore. Okay, that's fine. Well, this video is still relevant to the conversation. But again, this video with Jason Black, I thought it really put some things into perspective in terms of how a woman can show that she cares for a man. Now, of course, every man isn't Yo Gotti. However, he talked about Yes, Rev Run. I used to watch Run's house <laughs> when he would be in the bathtub on his phone at the end of each episode. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. He really put into perspective, again, some, some things that a woman does and ought to do when it comes to being with a man who is a producer. Now, I want to kind of create a baseline in what I would necessarily define as a producer because, because again, not every man is, is Yo Gotti. Not every man is, you know, a top 1%, 5%, 10% man. But over here, we talk about men who are, you know, have goals, have ambition, are steadily looking for ways to increase his income, to increase his knowledge base, to increase his spiritual closeness. A man who is, even if he's not a father, is looking to be a father. And he's moving the appropriate pieces in his life to be able to provide for a family, to be able to be emotionally available for a wife and children. To a man who has good character and upstanding values. To a man, again, who's steadily on his way toward an increased sense of, sense of income and assets. Okay? Because you may meet this man when he's 25. He's not going to be the same man at 35. 
but you have to know how to identify a man who who is you know of value in the sense in the senses that I just listed and you also have to understand that there is a way for you to help him increase his value over time as your value as a woman increases but you have to be willing to be there and to take the time and put in the effort and give him the words of affirmation and support that he needs in order to reach the goals that he has planned. So I'm not only, you know, solely talking about the man who's 40 and he's already, you know, on the, you know, he's already making, I don't know, whatever, 300,000, whatever, right? I'm not talking about that type of man. But I'm talking about the type of man who is on the consistent go toward a better structured life for himself and eventually the future family that he will have, okay? <laughs> Fair point. Okay, so again, I thought this was a good episode. So let's go ahead and bring this up. I don't have YouTube premium, you guys. So if an ad plays, don't judge me. All right. On the next program here, we're going to be Fair discussing you. a subject that I have brought up several times over the years, a concept that I've attempted to introduce several times over the years. And tonight we're going to go to it in depth that a woman must pay tribute if she's with a producer. Now, over the years, the concepts that I put out there have been used by other individuals. They've used them, but it wasn't actually fleshed out in this full context. In some cases, it was actually taken and distorted beyond belief. So it's not actually accurate. So tonight, we're going to take an opportunity to clean this up. Years ago, I said to people that a man needs to lead. And when I, I want to make it simple for guys to understand. So I told them, well, you should lead with your wallet. But I didn't mean you lead by throwing money and tricking it off. I meant that your wallet is a product of what you produced. You lead with what you produced. Some other folks out there took that and they repeated, a man leads with his wallet. When I realized that folks were not getting the game directly, let me go ahead and just clear it up. You lead with your accomplishments. That's what a man leads with. But the question is, what does a woman lead with? What does a woman bring? And the thing I told everybody here is that in the 21st century, if you are going to be a kept woman, you will be a working kept woman. You'll be a working kept woman. The idea that you're going to sit at home and bake cookies or the idea you're going to sit at home and sit on the couch and whatnot, that's a product of a bygone era. Now, you can do that. Let me get this straight. You can do it. It will work, but only with the lowest beta simp male. Now, it'll work with him because he knows he doesn't have any other options. He knows that you're the best he can do. So he will tolerate it. Didn't say he likes it, but he'll tolerate it because he's not competitive. He doesn't have a lot to offer. He knows in the sexual marketplace, he's roadkill. So for him, eh, he'll go ahead and tolerate that. But if you're talking about a producer, if you're talking about a man at the top of his game, if you're talking about a man who's still out here competing, conquering kingdoms, conquering mountains, still making things happen, that ain't gonna work. You will be a working kept woman. Now, much ado has been made recently about one Angela Simmons. For those of you who don't know, uh, Angela Simmons, you can look up her father. She years ago, long story short, Yo Gotti, music producer, he was pining for her. She didn't want it. Uh, you know how it goes. You get aged, you get pregnant. All of a sudden, ooh, let me go back through my mental Rolodex and see who I can get to answer the phone. And Yo Gotti answered the phone here. All right. Some folks are looking at it sideways, and I can understand why. I can understand why, but you know what? She must have gotten some sense and sensibility about her somewhere. She must have gotten some sense and sense. Okay. So the headline says, Angela Simmons gifts Yo Gotti a Tesla and a, and a surprise party for his 40 second birthday okay so something that jason black mentioned was you will be a working kept woman now you know what does he mean by that of course right you're not just going to be sitting on your behind looking cute not cleaning not cooking this man is going to have expectation of you in the relationship. And it's important for you ladies to be able to, even if he doesn't explicitly say, hey, you need to do this, this, that, and that. It's important for you to be able to self-correct and be situationally aware enough to be able to provide yourself some type of expectation that you perceive he will be good with. Okay. 
So again, as this headline says, Angela gifts Yogati with a Tesla and surprise it's birthday. About her somewhere because for his 42nd birthday here, she threw him a surprise party. I don't know how much of a surprise it could have been, but she threw him a surprise party. And as you can see, part of the festivities included that she bought him a Tesla. Now I think it's a Tesla Model X Plaid, but it's jet black and everything. So she, she bought him a Tesla. And I want to go ahead and show the unveiling of it because this is a huge teaching moment for all the ladies out there, but particularly for the fellas out there, this is a big teaching moment for you. I want you to learn something because this is the crux of what we're talking about tonight. And it's gonna come through those gates right there. Remember you said that you wanted a Tesla? Well, I got you one of those. All right, let me go ahead and kill the audio down just in case YouTube starts trying to ding me for copyright and whatever, but you can see what's going on there. So definitely... He's happy he bought the cell phone out. He's filming the whole thing going out there. So definitely he's loving the vibe off of it. And she's gone all out. She's gone all out to pay tribute. She's gone all out because she knows. Here's the thing. Angela Simmons knows what people are saying about her. Angela Simmons knows what the world is saying about her. So I'm going to just say this to you, Angela, well played. All I can say to you, Angela, is well played. You did excellent. You didn't do good. You did excellent. Well played. Slow clap. Well played. <laughs> I mean, look, you look, people just understand something. Good intentions, compliments, flowery words. Man, look here. That that is worth as much as it costs you to do it. She wanted to show that she knows she's with a producer. She's not with a high value man, she's with a peak value man. And she's coming in the door showing what that means. She's coming in the door showing that she values that. And also what she's doing is she's putting a hell of a distance between herself and any other woman that he's been with. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna show you guys. But I thought it was a good video for the ladies in particular, obviously, to view. Just to pick up the game that Mr. Jason Black drops in that video. Just so you can understand that if you truly want a man who you say who you want, you know, if you want this man who makes whatever, if you want a man who's worth something, you're going to have to give something in return. You're going to have to pay tribute. As he mentioned. And again, it doesn't necessarily matter what level of income this man is at. But if you see the value in this man, you're going to be willing to pay some type of tribute. Let me tell you, ladies, I pay tribute to my husband early in our relationship prior to us getting married. See, my husband has a muscle car, he owns a muscle car. And he, you know, enjoys building it. It is much more built up than now than it was when we first got together. And so how did not did I initially pay tribute to my husband? Because I saw the value in him, because I loved him, I appreciated him, and I knew that that's that him building up his car is something that he enjoys. And loves to do. And I had the money. So what's another. What's one way to show. That I cherish him and love him. Is get him something. For his car. That he could enjoy. Or that he would appreciate. I bought him. A transmission. For. His coyote Mustang. Manual. You know, he tries to teach me how to drive it, but I just cannot. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get the whole gear shift. Don't judge me, you guys, but just like, I do not get it. I don't know. So I get it maybe. Let's check back in in like a few years. <laughs> but I bought him a transmission. And it was nothing to me because that's his hobby. He enjoys his muscle car. He enjoys racing it. He looks good in it. So that was a part of me investing into our future together. Ladies, are you willing to invest into the future with this man who you claim you love and cherish and appreciate with this man who you claim you want 
with this man who you claim you want to marry and have children with? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to pay tribute? Hmm? If you're not, then I beg to differ on if you truly want a future with this man. Because there is no amount of money that you could pay for trust, genuine trust, genuine love. It's priceless. So I saw it as a small token of my love for him, of my support and respect for him. How are some other ways I pay tribute? When I was deployed, I was gone for, you know, one of my husband's birthdays. So I was literally gone from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. And so my husband's favorite animal is the lion. We would always watch, you know, the little, you know, nature docs with stories, you know, about lions and lionesses and things of that nature. And so when I was gone, I wanted to incorporate his like and appreciation for the lion in a different way. And so my husband's in, in his birthday is in the middle of the month. And so I was like, hmm, how can I be clever? How can I be thoughtful? How can I be different? Because my, my husband's a little older. So it's not like, you know, he's. He's experienced, you know, life in, in, in different capacities. You know, he had been out of the country a few times and, you know, been here, been there, you know, experienced this type of woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to be different, though. So I said, I'm going to get him a gift. Every single that will be sent to him for every single week throughout his birthday month. I want to, although I'm at a distance, I want him to feel like I'm there. So I'm going to try to schedule a way to get him a gift every week during his birthday month that he would that would be useful to him. So I got him like some tools, like some like a wrench set and a tool bag. And like something else, uh, oh, massage gun. And he still uses that ma massage gun. And the other thing that I truly, that was truly like, that, like dear to my heart that I purchased for him was I found a young woman, an artist on Instagram who knew how to do canvas art. And I particularly wanted her to paint on a huge canvas. The canvas is like really big, you guys. A lion's head with a huge mane that was black, white, and gold because that's kind of like my husband's Mustang is black and, you know, he wears gold. And so I wanted to, you know, include those elements that he likes. And so I found an Instagram artist who could paint animals very well and intricately because I was looking for a, a certain quality. And I found someone. And I paid several hundreds of dollars for her to paint this lion with a particular look with the huge mane, black, white, and gold that was inspired by the spirit and the strength of my husband. And I got it sent to him. Ladies, how thoughtful are your gifts? How do you pay tribute to that man? How do you show love and appreciation and respect and, ad and admiration to this man? You can do it by giving thoughtful gifts, useful gifts. 
Ladies, this is the way to cater to him. This is a way to pay tribute to him. Bathsheba says she paid tribute by learning how to cook vegan meals. That's thoughtful. That's selfless. Because her by doing this, learning how to cook vegan meals showed, hey, I want to put in my order and my request to be here for the remainder of your life, to be the one to provide to you the sustenance that you need in the way that you like. She put in her request. And you see in that sentence, it says, my husband. Request received. Ladies, be more thoughtful. And truly invest thought and time into what you would consider and what he would consider to be paying tribute toward your futures together, toward your marriage. But that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video. Send my likes up through the roof, roof, roof. Send my likes up through the roof, roof, roof. Send my likes up through the roof. Like the video. Share and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed tonight's conversation. <laughs> I appreciate all of you for being here. I miss you. I don't know when I'm going to be back. I've got a lot of things coming up and changing in my life, but I promise you I will be back with updates and stuff. But I really hope you enjoyed it, ladies. I hope this has provided to you another perspective. And I hope this helps you get prepared for the man that you say you want. Always remember that you have to put in the work. And I highly recommend for you to watch the rest of Mr. Jason Black's video. It is linked in the description box. Dropped a lot of gems. But again, that's all I got. The truth has been signed, filled, and delivered by yours truly. If you like the content you see, then please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of my new uploads or when I go live. And if you know of any women who you think would benefit from this information, who wants a higher sense of femininity, then please share. And until next time, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. But your life does not. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Bruh. We gonna keep this? <laughs> Nigga. I can't even reach it, bro. This is... <laughs> oh, I can feel that from where I am. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! I'm not engaging in this conversation with you anymore. Thank you. The door.